had a dilemma where you're on your own and you've run out of toilet paper. Have you ever bought it in bulk and you don't know where to put it? What today's project is going to be is this tray that we made that will sit perfectly on the back of your bathroom vanity and you can fill it to the brim with toilet paper. You will never ever need to worry about running out of that precious toilet paper again. The company comes to your house, got it right there. You won't have anybody saying, hey honey, do you have any toilet paper? So with that being said, let's get to building. The first step, measure your tank. This one is nine inches by 17 and a half. I'm going to make my eight and 17 inches. Okay, I hope you guys can hear me okay. It's 95 degrees out, so we are competing with the air conditioner. The first thing I'm going to do is take my crate apart because we're going to be utilizing a good part of this wood to build this tray but I have chosen this beautiful piece of pine that I found in my shed that will be cutting down to accommodate the bottom of the tray. You see how that's got the staples on it? We'll be cutting these ends off. We are going to use these as the sides because I love this handle. It's a lot cheaper to buy something like this for five dollars and utilize all the wood. Fine, right there. Success. We have our two sides. We want this piece right here to be eight inches across. And then it's going to be five inches in depth. The next step will be to measure and mark all of the cutting areas. And then we'll take it over to the miter saw and see what kind of magic we can make happen over there. As you can see, I have made my mark right here where it is halfway. And you would take a square if you have one, draw your straight line. And up here, you can see where your line is. You will take your square to your three quarter inch mark and draw your line. From here, you will start measuring out your four inches. We're making this five high. Go down five inches, line them up, draw your line that you're gonna cut from straight. If you guys uh, don't have a ruler handy, that's just kind of a way of doing it quickly as long as you know for sure that that piece of wood is absolutely straight you've got to make your mark also here oh yeah because you've got to cut those sides down right here there we go that center where you see the pencil marks that is going to be side a to the tray and we will repeat that exact sequence for the second side. Okay, let's go cut. Now, this is gonna be a little bit tricky. As you see, the height of that wood and the, the width of that blade are not gonna match. So what we do is he's gonna cut it as far as he can, and then we're going to flip the wood upside down and finish the cut on the other side. In a perfect world, we would just have a table saw and we'd be able to just push that right on through, but we don't have that. So this is one of those crafting animals ways where you do what you have to with what you have on hand and this is what we have we almost had it he'll flip it over now draw another line to make sure that that is perfectly lined up we'll do our best to get this lined up correctly it's 95 degrees we'll just blame the heat it looks pretty good. I will grab the sander and I will just sand that itty bitty piece. So I would say that's a successful cut. Remember, technically you want to cut outside of the mm -hmm. line yeah. right here so you won't hinder your measurements. All right, so we'll go do the next one. All right, we're cheating a little bit. The way that we cheat is we are tracing the already cut one onto the non-cut piece. Now we have two thighs. The next step is going to be measuring all of these and we're going to measure them a half inch in on each side. I will use the square to do a nice straight line and then we'll take it over to the saw and cut all five of these. Because I only have five, we're gonna do two in the front and three in the back. So as you can see, it just clears those, those marks from the where those staples were. The next step is just lightly sand all of the wood and I'm going to be using um, 100 grit sandpaper. This is lucky. Say hello. Hello. 
Lucky is a rescue that we rescued out of the clutches of a coyote at the end of our road. The coyote had the kitty in his mouth. He was a very tiny kitten, and that's why he's got a deformed leg. He's our baby. We've had him a long time. Bye, buddy. I'll tell you what, I must love you a lot because the heat index has it at 104, and I'm sitting outside making a video. <laughs> I must be crazy. This is the crafty nanny way, the crazy way. <laughs> Look at the difference. And that only took about a minute. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other four off camera. Well, there you have it, guys. All of the sanding is done. This is gonna be the bottom and the sides are done. And when I used my sander, remember when we had to uh, flip the wood over and cut and it had those little lines? It no longer has lines perfect everything has been sanded and the next step will be the staining and then we'll be able to start putting it together the bottom will be cut last now I'm not gonna stain the bottom until I know what the measurements are all right gloves on you see the goop at the bottom of the stain right there always stir stain don't shake stir so there we go now I will be polyurethaning this, isn't that pretty? Just a beautiful color. If you guys are going to try to make these to sell, I would recommend try to get these crates when they're on sale or on clearance and you can really make a lot of money. These crate, this crate was $3.50 on rollback at Walmart. Um, they normally sell for between $5 and $7.50, depending on what time of year you get them, but you can mark them up $25 and make yourself a nice little profit. I'll go ahead and finish staining the rest off camera. We're ready to assemble the top. Now remember, this is the bottom piece. It has not been cut yet. Basically, we're going to set up our sides and then we will take the main front piece and just simply nail it in, like easy, easy. And we're gonna do the same thing to the back. Now remember the front will have two of these, the back will have three, and then we will create the bottom. And I'm gonna put one nail on, on each end, so two, four nails for every single slat. And I am using one and a half inch um, finishing nails is what I'm using. And I sure hope it doesn't split the wood because if it does then, uh, that would be upsetting. But it does happen you guys, I'm not gonna lie. So I'm gonna be very easy with this. Success. Now those of you that are that are the lucky ones and have a brad nailer, well, you're gonna uh, go whip, whip right through this, but uh, I don't have one. Okay, now I'm gonna turn it around. Now we'll complete this side. We'll just say this is the back. We'll just say this is the back and we'll do all three pieces on the back. And we're setting these directly next to them. We're not putting any spaces between them at all. It's literally right next to it, okay? If you're gonna make these and sell them, I highly recommend using a brad nailer so that nobody can see them. Or you could even use staples like what they used before. That way you'll have a nice, clean finish. If you've stuck with me this far and you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. We're getting ready to have a contest and I don't want you to miss out on the contest because it does include everybody. Okay, first side. Okay, that's gonna be the back end. And then we'll have two in the front. Super fast project, you guys. So that part is finished. It's very strong, very sturdy. It's not wonky. <laughs> so the next thing will be, we're gonna cut the bottom to accommodate this beauty right here. And then we'll put some stain on it. We're gonna just trace it. This is not typically something we do. We typically measure everything out because it's so hot. And I, and I hate to complain, it is very hot. Um, and for the sake of you guys being bored, uh, we're doing it a fast way. So because our blade is only 10 inches and our wood is longer than that, um, we're back to the problem before. Same as before. So we're gonna have to cut one side, flip it, and cut the other. The length we're undecided on. We don't wanna really use a skill, uh, skill saw because we're concerned about a perfect cut. So we'll figure that out here in just a second. One step at a time. Okay, so 
That little tiny thing right there, I will uh, sand that off just like I sanded the other ones and you won't even know it's there. So no worries. Now we decided go ahead and use the miter on that long, long piece. And, and then we'll probably finish it off with the, um, the jig. If we, can't, if we can't complete it, we'll just use a jigsaw. Now, as you can see, that space right there that didn't cut, I'm gonna grab the jigsaw and I will finish this up. So this is a homesteader's chair that we have built. We actually built several of these. If you guys are interested in us doing this on camera, just let me know in the comments below and we'll go ahead and build it. It is made of nothing but two by fours. Um, right now, that is going to hold my piece of wood so I can saw it. <laughs> I will cut this as straight as I can, and then I'll sand the edges and stain it. I'm going to throw the sander on that real quick. Okay, as before, you could see you could see where we had to uh, saw backwards and now it's all smooth you can't even tell so success i'll stain it next we're going to stain the bottom and then we'll be able to put it together and then we can do our stenciling so the whole project um, from start to finish is only going to take about 30 to 45 minutes if you guys have not seen the dog cat house or the cat dog house, because we built it for a cat, this is some of the wood that was used in it and I will put an info card up above so you can click that and you can go check out that video as well. If you go see the cat dog house, you can meet uh, one of our dogs. She's in that video. <laughs> So there we go. Everything is dry and we're ready to put this bottom on. So we'll flip this upside down. And after considering how thin this wood is on the sides, I have decided to just do four nails on each end. That should be plenty to hold everything together. Remember, nothing heavy will ever go into this. Now, if you are going to, to have something heavy, going into that then you might want to rethink rethink what I am doing but this is how I'm doing it just because um, I don't want to risk breaking that real thin wood this is a very beautiful piece you guys I'm trying to save all my indoor projects for uh, winter when it gets too cold out okay the next thing we're going to do is do the stenciling but first, I want you to see how sturdy it is. I'm going to hold it, shake it, like it won't fall apart. So even though we only did four here and four here, that's all it needed. It's sturdy. It's not wobbly or anything. It's a great piece. So uh, we are going to be stenciling some uh, letters on it. And because this is going on the back of a toilet, it's going to say, hello, sweet cheeks. And we're going to put the word sweet right here, but uh, we're, because of how tall this is, we're going to do the SW and then we're going to move the stencil down and do the EE and then the T at the base. One thing about my channel is you guys learn with me. I don't practice any of this beforehand. I just do it on the fly. So what we decided to do is we're going to do hello here cheeks here and I cut out the stencil so I'm gonna use a Waverly white chalk paint because it dries super fast and hopefully even with the humidity it will dry I'm gonna do the S and the W and then I'm gonna let it dry and then I will take that off and I'll do the E the E and the T it's a simple stencil brush nothing fancy Okay, so the S and the W have been painted. Now I'm going to go ahead and pull off the stencil, crossing my fingers. It looks good. And it does. There's our S and our W. So we will let this dry and then we'll take care of the E, the E, and the T. I think that looks good. 
looks beautiful. And like I said, I will do the hello and the cheeks off camera so you guys don't have to look at it and watch me. And I will be removing that little tiny bit of paint right there. All right, I just finished all of the stenciling. And as you can see, hello, sweet cheeks, which will be on the back of the toilet tank lid. So we'll put toilet paper here, maybe a plant or a candle or something on the other side. The last step is to polyurethane. And normally I would use a brush. This time I'm using a spray. It's a nice high gloss. So I'll spray that on there and then we will be done. Beautiful, I like this. And, it's, and it dries fast too, this one does. So I highly recommend uh, spray poly if you guys don't don't have the time to sit sit with the with the brush for sure. This is wonderful. I just love it. It does drip though. It's a little drippy. But I highly recommend it. It dries quick. So there you have it, you guys. We created this for less than uh, $5. It was a cheap crate from Walmart. We took it apart and we created an amazing little thing that you could, you could take this same exact um, thought and make them your own and sell them at your craft bazaars or whatever so i hope you liked the video if you did give me a thumbs up um that's always uh, makes me want to do these more for you guys and i will see you in the next video bye